Hello everyone, Joe here. Uh, I'm just going to be doing a quick guide on how to swap between an AMD to an NVIDIA graphics card because obviously the drivers are not going to be compatible. So you want to take those out. <clears throat> so the first tool I have here is GPU-Z, just gives you some of the basic information about your card. You can see that the vendor is MSI, this is an 8 gigabyte model. Um, to get this piece of software, you just go ahead and go to Tech Power Up, GPU-Z. I apologize for the flicker. Um, I had to record this with my camera, and I can't do it uh, with internal software because I'm going to be removing drivers. But anyway, you just go ahead and click here at the top left where it says Download GPU-Z. You go ahead and download that tool and install it. And then that'll just get, basically give you your information. Uh, the next tool that you are going to want to download is Display Driver Uninstaller. So DDU, you can come to Tech Guru's website and you can download it here. You just scroll to the bottom and then where it says Download Locations, you just pick the location that's closest to you and then it'll download to your computer. Uh, this will download as a zip file, I believe, so you will need to extract it. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, and then, of course, the last thing you're going to need before you go ahead and do a switch is you're going to want to go to the NVIDIA website. You're going to want to go to G4, GeForce Drivers. And then you're going to go ahead and select your GeForce 20 series non-notebook. Go down to the 2060, in my case, anyway. And then Windows 10 64-bit and do the search. And it comes up with Game Ready Drivers 445.87. So I've already downloaded these. These I have placed uh, up here on my desktop. We can go ahead and leave Tech Power up because it gives the camera something to focus on and it makes it a little bit easier to deal with. But we'll go ahead and open up the zip file for the DDU. And what I like to do is just create a new folder on the desktop sorry about that, just called DDU, and then I will drag both these files. You actually don't need this folder. This folder has nothing really in it. You can just take the file out here. Now, uh, the reason I put it into a separate folder is because it itself, after you open it, will want to extract. And this way, I can just go ahead and let it extract directly into the folder that it already is and now you'll have the second folder. Now this is the actual tool that you'll want to use uh, to uninstall the drivers. However, this uh, driver tool, this utility, is best used uh, in safe mode for the computer. So what I'm going to show you now is how you would get to safe mode. Um, but one last thing before we go ahead and reboot the computer and go about removing uh, drivers and things like that, you're going to want to go ahead and go to your search bar just go ahead and type in create and you'll see here create a restore point. Let me go ahead and move this in here so you can see what's going on. And if you read it, it just basically allows you to create a restore point. I only have protection turned on on my main system drive, not on my other two drives. So I'm going to go ahead and if you see this it says create restore point now for the drives that have system protection turned on. So I'll click that. I'm going to name it GPU just because that's the type of swap that I'm doing and that lets me know that this restore point is one for I swapped my GPUs out. Go ahead and click create. Uh, depending on your computer this could take a little while. Uh, mine usually does it pretty quickly. The restore point was created successfully. So now our next goal is going to be booting into safe mode. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to do this. My favorite way uh, is just going to settings and then update and security going to recovery see this advanced startup go ahead and click restart now this will bring up a different set of options that you'll see here and you'll want to click troubleshoot advanced options and I believe you want to click startup settings and if you see here enable safe mode is one of the settings you can enable so now you'll go ahead and click the restart button in the center and your system will actually fully do the restart this time instead of just that quick one into the menus and again depending on your computer this will take a few seconds and now you'll see here that we can enter safe mode 
Now I'm going to enter safe mode with no networking, just regular old safe mode. And you can see the resolution is all messed up. If you had dual monitors set up, they're now all per, you know, showing, showing the same image. And what we are going to do is we're going to go into our DDU folder. We're going to go into the second one because this is the actual program. We're going to run Display Driver Uninstaller. And as a matter of fact, I'm not sure if it matters. We're going to go ahead and close those out. I'm not sure if it matters, but I'm going to run as administrator. And then you're going to select over here the type of device. Sorry for the flicker again. It's AMD or Intel or NVIDIA. In this case, we're removing AMD drivers. And then you have three options. Clean and restart. Clean and do not restart. This may cause a black screen. And clean and shut down. This is specifically for installing a new graphics card. So this is the one that we are going to do. This is only going to wipe all the existing drivers in the system for the AMD graphics card. And then it will shut the system down. And at that point, power your system off at the power supply. Make sure you let all the power come out of the system by trying to turn the power button on a few times. Go ahead and then disconnect and install the new graphics card. And then we'll get to the next step then. Okay, now that the drivers are removed, we're going to go ahead and remove the graphics cards. And I purposely left the power on to show you that the first thing you're going to want to do is reach behind your computer, is go ahead and kick off that power supply, and you're going to wait until those LEDs die out. And even then, you might want to go ahead and click the power button a few times. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and start removing the graphics card. I'm going to start by undoing the 8-pin power connector. Luckily, the cards I'm switching from and to are both 8-pin power connectors. Now, there are two screws that are holding this in up here, the top. They are thumb screws, however, I did use a screwdriver just to make things a little easier in this situation. You can see the card physically sag down as that screw comes loosened. And the most important thing is to make sure you get the latch at the very back of the PCI Express slot. You know, want to push that down to release the card. And then slowly pull out. Ah, and don't make my mistake, before you do that, make sure you unplug all of your display cables because otherwise you're going to have to do it just like I did. And as you can see, here's the old MSI RX 480 graphics card. It did me well. Okay, you might notice a slightly different camera angle here, just a little bit. Uh, I used my camera to take some close-up stills of the two uh, cards compared side-by-side, side, just to kind of get a size comparison. Uh, and uh, it's the MSI card's quite a bit taller. Lengthwise, I don't see much of a difference, but the MSI card's quite a bit taller. Now, the thing I don't like is that the 8-pin PCI Express connector is going to be in a completely weird spot. But let's go ahead and get this bad boy snapped in place. So we're going to go ahead and basically reverse what we just did. I'm going to go ahead and slide this into the back. And slide it down until you hear it latch. That's the latch. And then you're going to want to go ahead and put your two screws back in. Again, like I said, I'm using a screwdriver just kind of to make this slightly easier. Which that didn't seem to work. It's a little hard to do when you're leaning over the camera. There we go, got the first one started. 
That's the important part. And now to find that thumb screw that fell, there it is, right behind my cables. If you know what you're doing, you can just please go ahead and skip this part if you've seen this already. But I'm just putting both screws in. And if you notice, I left the first one loose. The last thing I like to do is kind of lift up on the card before I tighten down the thumb screw. And I know people seeing me tighten down thumb screws with a screwdriver are saying that kind of defeats the purpose, but I have the screwdriver handy and it makes things easier for me. So, And our next step is going to be plugging in both our PCI Express power and plugging in our video cables into the back. So this is going to bring my cable over. And not only does it bring my cable over, it actually reverses it. So, wow. Well, that kind of ruins the whole aesthetic of my power supply zip tie cable combs. Anyway, I have a new black 8 pin cable coming uh, soon. So, because of that, and I don't really want to mess this one up, I'm actually going to remove that extension for now. And just run the power cables from the PSU. It's not going to look as pretty, but like I said, I got a new cable coming in in the next couple of days. So this will just be temporary. Easier to deal with for right now. Since I spent so much time molding the other cable the other direction. Okay, so let me go ahead and pop in the display cables in the back. And for the time being, I am only going to, I'm going to block the camera here really quick. For the time being, I'm only going to plug in the HDMI cable to my main display until I get drivers and everything set up. And then I'll plug in my secondary display. So now we can click back on power supply. Everything's good so far. And the moment of truth. Oh, the one thing that I forgot to do, that I still have time to do, is unplug my internet. Because I don't want it to try to download auto drivers from Windows, since I have the NVIDIA drivers on my desktop. Okay, so we are in Windows. I'm going to go ahead and stop this here and switch this back over to my other tripod so that we can go ahead and take care of this. Okay, so we're now back here at the desktop and we're gonna go ahead and run the NVIDIA driver tool. We'll go ahead and run it. Yes, we'll launch the launcher. Okay. Okay, so we've popped on to the next step here. Sorry for the autofocus. I don't know why it's having such a hard time tracking what's going on on screen. I think it's the crossing bar. That might have stopped it, hopefully. So I personally do not want the GeForce experience. So I'm just going to go with the NVIDIA graphics driver. If I decide to change my mind, I'll do it later. I always click custom to see what kind of thing they want to do. And we could tell it to perform a clean install. I don't see why we would have to, but might as well go ahead and add that in there.
the driver has just kicked in and you can see that the resolution of the monitor has corrected itself and everything's installed close so now when I open up tech power up GPU Z we should see something totally different and there we go NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 TU 106 okay so that was my quick guide to how you switch from AMD to NVIDIA uh, now I am going to be doing comparative benchmarks uh, between my RX 480 and the GTX or the RTX 2060 uh, and also checking to see in certain titles how held back uh, the 2060 is by my 6600K at 4.4 gigahertz because there was already some games that the CPU was kind of not limiting the 480 but definitely running as hard as the 480 so now that I have something that's going to be running much faster I'm expecting to hit some harder walls when it comes to CPU usage but anyway that's not the point of this video so thanks for watching if you have any questions please uh, hit them down in the comments and also check back if you want to see the comparative benchmarks for the RX 480 versus the 2060 on an i5 6600K with 16 gigs of RAM. If that interests you, swing by the channel later and see if it's posted yet. Have a good one.